Hi, if you watch this channel at least from time to time, you might know this notebook. I'm using this notebook to show you some stuff drawing. I hope that one day this notebook, black notebook by the way, will, will be as famous as a certain black couch, but this is not. Today, today I will show you something else because I have slightly updated and upgraded my workshop and I have this thing. I, starting from today, I have something like a whiteboard. It's not a whiteboard, I'm renting over here in Berlin a very small apartment. It's just impossible for me to get a um, real proper whiteboard over there. So this thing will just have to do. Today, today I will tell you a bit about probably the biggest lie of our hobby. The lie is called KV. Everybody knows KV when it's related to the motors. This motor or this motor. This motor is rated at 2300 and this motor is rated at 1450. Everybody knows because it's a famous, uh, it's a widespread knowledge that KV stands for how fast the motor is rotating without load comparing to the voltage. So, if I have a motor of kV, 1500 kV, and I'm gonna apply to this 10 volts, it's gonna rotate with the angular speed, because not linear, because in motor there are not very, uh, very many linear things, it will rotate with one, two, one, no, 15,000 R, ah, Pavel, get yourself together, RPMs. Everybody knows that, right? Only it's a lie. KV is not a constant, because KV is one of the motor constants, it's not a rating or anything like that, that tells you how fast the motor will be rotating when we're gonna apply the voltage to it. No, no. It's approximation, pretty well close approximation, but it's not true. KV can be understood as the maximum theoretical speed that the motor can can achieve without any load. But because there are some, well, let's say everything creates a drag. There is a bearing, there is always some air movement generated by the bell and stuff like that. This speed, this speed over here will absolutely never be achieved. So, and it's not this. KV is one of the constant of the motors that tells you something about, oh, it's squeaking. Back EMF. What is back EMF? When we have a magnet, because the motor consists of the magnets, and we have beautiful coils over here with some wire winded on it like this. When the magnet on the bell is moved above the coil, it generates some electricity because this is what you can convert the magnetic field into electricity using coil everybody almost everybody knows that d if no not d if the motor is rotating with a thousand r p m s right it's simple and the back emf is rated at 1 volt, that means this motor has a KV writing, no, KV constant of 1000. So it's 1000 KV. Simple? Almost like the popular knowledge. But it's slightly different. This speed will never be really achieved because it, it's theoretical. The motor will never go above the speed if additional power will not be applied somehow from the outside. This is max what the motor can do. Of course, it will never do it because A, this is no load scenario, B, there is never really a case when there is absolutely no load. There's always some load of the bearings of the drag of the eddy currents and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff like that. But there is also another 
popular lie. Uh, that says, if I want to fly faster, I need the motor with the higher KV. So if I have, let's say, KV of 2000, oh, 2000, and I want to fly faster, let's say twice as fast, I need probably 4000 KV, because then the propeller will be rotating twice as fast as before. No. Well, yes, in theory, yes, but it's not really absolutely true. The KV is tightly connected with a different constant of the motor that is called KT. KT is the constant that tells us how torque compares to, uh, relates to the current that the motor is uh, consuming right now. It's converting electrical current into the movement. KT is related to the KV and it's related to the torque. How? You will never believe it. KT equals 1 slash KV. What does it mean? If you have more KV on your motor, then you will have less torque than with the motor with the lower KV rating. And this brings us to a very, very interesting question. Let me remove that and write this thing somewhere here on the above, above that kt equals 1 slash kv. What the torque is? Another very important question. Everybody who attended school should know this equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. It's true for the linear movement. That means if we have a box if we have a box and we're gonna apply a force to a box, the box weighing, let's say, how much? One kilogram and we're gonna apply one newton of force because newtons are the value, that are the unit of the force. The box will begin accelerating in this direction with the acceleration of one meter slash second square. That means after one second it will have the speed of um, one meter per second, after two seconds it will have the speed of the four meters per second, and so on and so on and so on and so on. But motor kinda like it's not a linear movement. Instead of the linear movement we have something called the angular movement. Here we have a pivot. Let's Right, that it's a pivot. And here, somewhere, let's say, on the string, we have our box. If I'm gonna apply the force oriented like that, what the box gonna do? It cannot move on a straight line because the string or the rigid body is attached over here. It's gonna begin Oh, I think this, this is not the nicest drawing ever. It's gonna enter the angular movement and after some time it will be over here. Then if we gonna still apply the same force over here, it's gonna move over here and still it's gonna accelerate. When we are talking about the circular movement around some kind of the pivot, like the bell and the propeller is rotating around the motor, we are not talking about the force, we are talking about the torque. Torque is newtons times meters. What does it mean? If we have a force applied one meter from the pivot point and the force is equal, this is one meter and the force is equal one newton, that means our torque in this case is equal one newton meter. If the force will be applied two meters away from the pivot point, the force, the torque will be equal two newton meters. Simple, simple, okay. Now, why we need a lot of torque? Because bodies 
our motors and propellers are accelerating only as long as the force is applied, any force. If there are no forces, the body is just moving and if the forces are in the direction of the movement, then it's accelerating, in the other direction it's decelerating and, and stuff like that. So, if we have our motor, one more time, oriented like this, over here we have a coil 1, coil 2, coil 3, here are magnets rotated somewhere on the outside of our motor, and here we have the propeller, and here we have the propeller, something like this, then if the force will be applied like this, because this is the torque in our newton meters, the propeller will be accelerating with some acceleration. Hey, nice, nice, everything, everything understand. But we are living in the real world and uh, we hate something that's called the drag. What's the drag? The drag is, in our case, when we have the motor and the propeller, is the force that trying to, well, it's a drag. It's a drag. So, if we are applying a force to start the acceleration of the, of the motor and the propeller, the drag will be appearing and the drag will be oriented in the opposite way, opposite side of how we are applying the force. And if the drag force is equal to the force, to the torque, drag torque versus the motor torque, then we have a constant acceleration speed. If the torque will be higher than the drag, then the whole thing, our motor and the propeller attached to it, will start accelerating and generating more RPMs, probably also generated slightly, slightly more trust. About the trust, I will make a video about the trust in the hopefully next few, next few days. Now, if we want to rotate faster, because we want higher speed and we want a bigger thrust, we have to apply more torque, more force to the propeller and to the motor than currently the drag is taking away from us. And now, the one of the most important things you have to understand. Drag is not linear. Drag of course, if we are talking about very slow, uh, slow speeds, then drag, yeah, that drag can be linear. But as, slow, as soon as there are some turbulences and, and stuff like that happening over there, the drag relates to the speed square. That means if we want to rotate something twice as fast as before or move something twice as far as before, like a propeller through the air or body through the air, whatever, and we want to increase the speed twice, we have to increase the force four times. Why? Because v squared. This is why, assuming that to have the rotation speed of, let's say, 1000 RPMs, we need, let's say, one Newton meter. If we want to rotate with the speed of 2000 RPMs, how much more Newtons we need, Newton meters, times 4, 4 Newton meters. Simple, simple. And now, remember this equation, kT equals 1 slash kV. This equation tells us that the higher the kV of the motor, the lower the torque the motor produces from one amp. Makes sense? There will be a link to some interesting articles in the Wikipedia somewhere else that describes this in the more, let's say, structural way. That means the higher the kV, Yes, the higher the theoretical maximum rotation speed of the motor, but also the lower kV per amps, so you need much more amps to have the same 
rotation speed because of the torque has to be applied so start accelerating and that means the efficiency of the motor will be highly highly severe so this is like a compromise okay we are getting slightly more rotation but we are paying enormous really enormous price to achieve the torque required to spin the motor as fast four times more amps and if we go on a four times or eight four times more torque we need to achieve, uh, four times more amps we need to achieve the same torque and we are losing a shitload of efficiency. This is why if you want to have an efficient motor pulling reasonably low amount of current that means you definitely should not aim for K high kV motors because the losses over there will be just, just great. In some cases, the raising of the kV of the motors, yes, it will increase the speed, but will lower the torque. That also means that the responsiveness of the whole propeller and motor combo will be lower and you might lose something. The something you are losing is the torque that is required to change, to efficiently, a fast change the rotation speed of the propeller motor combo. Get it? I hope what I said makes kinda sense. The most important lesson from this drawing of mine. KV is not the rotation speed per volt, it's only the back EMF for RPMs 2 volts, almost the same but not really. And the more KV, the less torque, the more current you need to have exactly the same rotation speed and you lower the efficiency of the whole design. If you liked what I just kind of said over here, there will be more about the common myths of the RC hobby. The next myth <laughs> might be about the trust, because once again, trust is a bitch, because trust in kilograms what the fuck is thrust kilograms and even more important, weight of the propeller. Okay, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.